This Ag Vision program is made possible through the generous support of Syngenta Seeds NK brand. The results you need, the freedom to choose. And by Farms.com. Ag news, market prices, ag careers, and farm real estate. You'll find it all at Farms.com. Welcome back to Ag Vision. Running a farm business can be very frustrating, especially when the people issues are involved. Now, it used to be that if you had a hired man and he was a little undependable, the stoic farmer could fall back on the old motto that, well, when you want it done right, you do it yourself. The problem is that as farms become larger and more complicated, this is no longer an option. So it becomes necessary to finally face the human resource challenges on the farm. Here to help us do that is Eric Spell. He is the president of agcareers.com, and we're glad that uh, you've joined us here in the mm -hmm. studio today. Glad to be here, Kevin. So let's put us all of us here in the studio and at home on the same page. What is agcareers.com? Well, agcareers.com is a website. Okay. We're a subsidiary of farms.com. Right. We have over 1,000 jobs listed at any given day in North America and Australia and New Zealand now, other places throughout the world. Mm -hmm. um, we are aimed as a free service to job seekers. They can come to the site as professionals, uh, young and experienced professionals, uh, can post their resume in our database with hopes of an employer finding them, mm -hmm. or they can apply directly to the jobs that are posted by employers on the site. Can you describe for us the context of human resources and how serious a barrier that it is to farm profitability going forward? Well, the farming industry and agribusiness industry has improved with its technology, but at the end of the day, we have to have people to doing those jobs. Yeah. And uh, just from a sheer numbers standpoint, there's 77 million baby boomers in the industry, and some of these farmers are reaching retirement. So they're looking for how they can pass their assets down to the next generation, which only consists of 44 million people. Wow. So just from an availability of resources, skilled labor, we're, we're into a real pinch right now. I was reading just recently, um, and I actually collected a couple of comments, and you can tell me whether this sounds consistent with what you have heard. Uh, one gentleman, for instance, says, uh, I would qualify that the current HR situation in agriculture is critical. Another says that enrollment in management and technical and farm labor courses, this happens to be in Quebec, uh, is only 2,000 students and that is not enough to meet the uh, current and future farm labor needs. Is that, does that sound familiar to you? Yes, it's familiar. The one thing we've relied on within the colleges of ag and uh, life sciences throughout North America is the traditional pipeline of kids growing up on farms. Right. Well, the number of kids growing up on farms, that's a smaller pool than it was several years ago. Also, demographically, the students enrolled in these universities has changed. Uh, yeah. In a lot of cases throughout North America, 60% of the enrolled students within the colleges of ag are female. And so that's going to present itself with some inter interesting uh, challenges, opportunities. We have to reach out to a different type of student than we have in the past. So as you mentioned, uh, the growth of any organization, of any business, obviously depends on new blood and young blood in many cases, and agriculture has not seen a lot of that in the past number of decades. Are you seeing any strategies out there, things that organizations or farmers are trying that are working to recruit young people? I've seen in uh, Western North America some uh, large farming groups getting together and forming a cooperative. In other words, there's seasonal crops that come off, seasonal fruit, vegetables, etc. Mm -hmm. And they've gone together and formed a cooperative, which is a workforce that can rotate across those different farming opportunities or those products that are being produced. And as opposed to having seasonal or part-time labor for six, three months, they now have full-time employment. So it offers benefits to the employers and the job seekers. Now, what about recruitment at the university level? Is that working? Um, is there something they could be doing better to recruit better? Well, I've been involved in this, and I'm real passionate about the, the recruiting on campuses. Yeah. And I think we as employers and university need to think differently and look for opportunities. Um, over the past five years, we've held an Ag HR Roundtable. And um, we've had in, in upwards of 10, in the past two years within Canada, we've had 10 universities represented at that, those roundtables. Mm -hmm. 
And um, I think we need to make some adjustments in when we hold our career fairs. I think we need to think very carefully as employers of who we send to represent our business, whether we're a farmer, a large farming operation, or a large uh, business, because that has a reflect on our industry. If students see, that's who they see, coming to speak at their clubs and associations and events. And um, universities are having a tough time getting employers engaged in supporting their programs, coming meet and greet sessions. Yeah. Let's be let's be real frank about something. Agriculture in North America has a perception problem. And if I was a young person right now, here are some things that and you tell me whether this uh, you've heard this before, at least come coming from young people. Um, my first reaction to going into agriculture is perception. Um, it's a lot of work. Uh, probably doesn't pay that well. Uh, likely is not a stepping stone for a career um, involves a lot of investment a lot of risk are, are these like how are we going to overcome these types of perceptions well young people today are interested in technology okay. and within the agribusiness industry I think that's a play we can take advantage of we have loads of GPS technology computerized equipment okay. um, computers within how uh, on the farms and if we can take advantage of that and present that to students within the math and science high schools and community colleges and universities I think we can really inspire some non-traditional students who maybe didn't grow up on farms that enjoy working outdoors mm -hmm. to consider a career in our industry um, let's um, <laughs> put yourself in the position of a farmer for a second uh, there'll be obviously a lot of farmers watching this who are in what we will call remote areas right? maybe most farmers in the country <laughs> d defined by that you are a farmer in a very remote area what strategies would you employ to attract and keep good labor well, I think one of the things that uh, we're hearing a word around and a phrase is employer brand. And if I'm a farmer, I want to be involved in the community that I'm in. And sometimes in 4-H activities and FFA activities or mm -hmm. business clubs within high schools, I'm going to take an opportunity to help build that pipeline of interest and influence how young people in high schools and community college perceive our industry. And I would like to challenge each and every farmer out here today to get involved in helping influence um, how what young people are receiving in the way of information about good news about our farming. We traditionally um, sit back and get on the defensive about bad news within our industry, droughts, um, uh, labor shortages, and we need to take full advantage of sharing some good news, some trendy or appealing or cool um, professions that exist within our industry so that uh, people are uh, much more optimistic about the industry as opposed to pessimistic. And just by matter of fact, uh, what strategies would I actually do? Would I build a website? Would I go to the university or to the high school? How would I attract labor if I'm a farmer? Well, if I'm a large farmer, uh, one thing I would say about a website, a poorly designed website is worse than no website at all. Okay. Uh, when uh, people today are applying to jobs on our site, our research has shown that the first thing they do when they see an opportunity is they go look for information through Google or Yahoo yeah. or et cetera to learn information about that business. Mm -hmm. If I am going to have a website, I'd make sure it's crisp, take time to develop a quality website, uh, post information that's uh, informative about the business and the scope of the business and what the future growth is. Would you actually go to a college or a high school to directly talk to students? Is that worthwhile? Thing? Well, it depends on, um, you know, there's different resources. If I'm a farmer and I'm looking for skilled labor, I may um, go into some of the clubs, the civic clubs and organizations and share a bit about yeah. my, the growth of my business. If I am looking for a young person, yes, I would go to uh, the high school and get to know the faculty and the principal and the advisors and teachers within that Sure. Um, they school. all have career days, right? Sure. I'd get involved or ask, volunteer. Say, I'd like to come and speak to the students about careers. They have job days, job shadowing days. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I think we've done as farming is we've we've missed that opportunity because, and there's safety regulations, but I think we've missing that opportunity for young people to work while they're in high school yeah. on safe occupations within the farm. 